Welcome to Computer Science 320 2015 Winter 1's Midterm 1 Practice Problems. This is Problem 1, Parts 6 and 7, and this is going to be really quick, because we've actually already worked through both of these parts. The first question just asks us to explain why our bound from the previous part is not a theta bound, and we already said that's because there are an infinite number of problem sizes for which fortunately or unfortunately, fortunately for the runtime of the algorithm, unfortunately from our analysis perspective, the algorithm takes constant time to run. And so our big O bound, which is nice and clean, is not actually a big theta bound. If we wanted a big theta bound, we'd have to give a mathematical function that looks a whole lot like the original algorithm. So that wouldn't be very clean, and it's not what we consider a good bound. So why isn't it a theta bound? Because the algorithm is not lower bounded by square root of n for n not a multiple of 4, not divisible by 4. There's other values we can worry about, you know, what about something that's divisible by 4, but only once. So it's uh, 3 to the 10th times 4. And in that case, we're still not going to be lower bounded by square root of n for things that are like that. But that's not important. We already have an infinite number of examples that show there's no theta bound here. So let's move on to the next part, which is to briefly explain why we cannot use the master theorem to give a theta bound on the runtime of this algorithm. And quite honestly, it's the same deal. The master theorem is supposed to be used for recurrence relations that have some set of base cases or single base case at some constant size. And for every other n, for all the n greater than some n naught, the function behaves like the recurrence relation. But that's not the way this algorithm behaves. So again, basically it's it's this, but we'll say we'll say that uh, and to put it differently, the algorithm has an infinite number of base cases. There's actually lots of reasons we might not be able to use the master theorem on a particular problem, even though it usually is applicable for these divide and conquer style problems. But this is the reason for this one. So that completes these two problems. Next, we'll work on the next part of problem one.